Hey guys, Tagged Out here. Today we're going to be rewiring a rapid strike. The tools you'll need for this rewire are a soldering iron, probably a hot glue gun, a Phillips head, and a flathead screwdriver, an X-Acto knife, a pair of needle nose pliers, some snips, some wire strippers, some wire strippers, and a dremel. The materials and supplies you'll need for this mod are a big heat shrink, which isn't necessary, we just like to use it sometimes to hold the wire together. A little heat shrink, which is fairly necessary. Uh, probably electrical tape. Three motors. I have two uh, fangs revamped and one honey badger. Three switches. These are just clones. Some solder. And a, this is a containment crew uh, switch mounting plate so it holds three switches really well in good places and it should make it easier to wire significantly easier it also replaces the rev switch and trigger for more comfortable pieces so we'll link this in the description just so you know where to get it the first step of this mod is to remove these three screws holding the uh, battery door tray doodad in place here we go so because this is a really old rapid strike, uh, my friend has already done some mods and kind of taken some stuff out. So we'll just show you what you need to keep. You do need to keep the battery door. But you can take all the spacers and connectors and everything out of it. To give you more, so, much more room So for it's a just battery. a plastic tray. And after you do that, you can set it aside. And start removing the screws. Once you take all the screws out, you can go ahead and open it up. Once you take it apart, you can set this half aside. You won't need it until you put it back together. You can go ahead and take all of the wiring out, all the motors out, and everything. And this entire switch plate piece. So we're just going to come in here. There are, I think there's two or three, yeah, there's three screws that hold that in. And you just unscrew those. Well, mine has two because I took one out a long time ago. And you can just remove all throw this it. away. And then we remove our magazine release. And because we don't have a replacement, we will need it later. Our magwell uh, guide, I guess you could call it. That. Sling attachment points, sights, everything just to make it easier. Uh, you can remove this cover. There should be wires running under it in yours. And you can also remove these two screws below the pusher. And just take that entire box out. You can just take the sock out, set it aside. Take the top half of this orange piece on the front off. And then you can get out like the flywheel cage. Take the motors out. A trick to getting the flywheels off of a, off the motors in the flywheel cage is to stick a screwdriver in the slots by each motor in the back. If you push them like down on a table or whatever your work thing is, they should pop off pretty easy. And it's the one of the most efficient ways to get them off. And then you should just be able to push the motor shafts down on something and pull the motors out. And you can throw these away. Once you take the stock motors out of your file cage, you can insert the new motors. So they should have red dots on them. One dot faces forward, like that, towards the bad guy that you're going to be shooting at. The other one faces away. One other thing you need to do before inserting your motors is trim the inside. So there's these little plastic ridges. I don't know if y'all can see there. But there's these little plastic ridges that you just need to shave off with your exacto blade. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove these four screws. But because he's previously taken apart the blaster, there's only two. Once you get both your motors on there, you can go ahead and put your flywheels on. Just make sure they're even. 
Yep. Um, we suggest just pushing the flywheel down to the very end of the shaft. Put both flywheels on and push them down like this. And see how far you can get them. Ours are not quite aligned to the end, but we think that's going to be okay. Once you put the flywheels and motors in, you can put the top half of your flywheel cage back on and set it aside. Next, we're going to work on the pusher motor. Just pull out your motor, and we do need this white plastic piece in the end. No. So get a flathead screwdriver and stick it between the motor and, and just lever it up. And then you just do the same thing with pliers. And it'll just slip right off. And you can just slip it onto the motor. It there should you. not matter which direction it goes on. There's one end that just won't go over it, so. And then you can uh, chuck your old pusher motor. Before we put our new motor in, because our new motor has the tabs at the top instead of on the side, we have to trim a little bit of our pusher housing. So we're gonna get an X-Acto blade and see where these tabs line up and cut a little slit for each tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw this back together. Once you uh, assemble your gearbox again, you can start putting the switches on this switch mounting plate. So you'll have to, if you have levers, you'll have to trim down all the levers a little bit. One of them, you just have to trim like just a tiny little bit off the end. Uh, that one will go as the top switch. The one with the long, slightly trimmed pusher goes right here. And then we can screw it in with the provided screws. So after you screw it in, just make sure it clicks. Nice the other happy. two, The other two can be trimmed pretty much equally to about the top of the switch. You'll have to trim behind the trigger a little bit just to keep this moving well. Once you put those switches in, you can go ahead and put your screws in. After you screw those switches on, you can go ahead and set this aside and grab the half of your shell. One other thing we need to do is trim this screw post. Just make it flat with these ridges and you should be good to go. You also need to take out the same screw post on the screw side of the blaster. So you'll need to take out the screw post here, this one, and this one back here as well. Now you're going to want to plug in your soldering iron so it can start heating up. Now that we have all our motors and switches in place, we can begin wiring the blaster. Our first connection is from the barrel side of the motors down to the battery door. So you can strip the ends of this wire, or the end of this wire, and then strip a chunk like out of the middle to go over your lower connection, I guess you could say. After you take a chunk out, you can kind of like lay it out with your X-Acto and then slide it over the connection point. So this is the end that will be shooting at people. And because you have to flip it over like this to put it in, you're going to want the wire to run out what you're looking at as the top. Once that's like slipped over, you can go ahead and solder it. Once you solder it, you can just cut about this much. Now you can do the exact same thing that you just did, but to the other side. Next step is to splice your barrel side wire. To do this, you just want to cut a chunk out. Like we do for the second motor connection. Once you cut a chunk out, you can split it out with your X-Acto. Then you get a piece of wire, you strip the end, and you kind of just, you just wrap it around. Put a little bit of solder on there. And then if you want to, you can put some heat shrink over it. Now that we have these three wires in place, we're going to get another strand after. So we're just going to pop this in real quick to see where we need to cut this. So we're gonna just going to cut it about here because the one that we just spliced on is going to a switch. One of these two switches. I'll let you know later. We're not there yet. 
Now you're going to strip the ends of these two wires. So the spliced one coming from the motors and the new one. And then you can solder your XT60 connector onto the end with the spliced wire being the positive and the plain Other old wire. boring wire being the negative. So this is the positive and the positive goes to the flat side of the XT60 connector. Do not forget spliced wire go to flat side. The next step is to put the flywheel cage in the blaster. In order to do this, you have to trim off this orange part of this particular channel. We're going to use an exacto blade. Once you put that in, you can just screw the screws in. Once you uh, put the cage in, you can go ahead and plug in your soldering iron. Elijah. Because you'll be needing it soon. Now we're going to pull these wires over here. And we can put this piece back on. Now we can put our switch plate on like so. So let's go ahead and get our spliced wire soldered on. So we're gonna strip it. Before we attach our spliced wire, let's go into which one? I'm sorry. That one. The second one. Okay. So the splice wire is going to the normally open. Normally open, which is this tab. It's here. the one immediately next to the tab on the side of the switch. So there's a side one, and it's on the bottom next to the side one. So we can cut this here. Then we will strip it. Once you strip the wire, you can go ahead and solder on. Also, just be careful with your switch plate if you are using one because 3D printing is not the most heat resistant material. Now that we've wired the splice, we're going to wire our battery open. And I'm only. going to battery only. Yeah, undo that. I'm going to string it under here. Once you run your wire, you can strip it and solder it to the normally open on the rev switch. So that's the one you know. immediately next to the comm tab. So now we're going to wire our last remaining wire to the comm on the rev switch. So that's the side tab. This short length of wire that we're about to solder goes from the comm on the rev switch, where you just soldered another wire, to the normally open on the trigger switch, which is the one next to the comm. <laughs> So now you want to cut a little piece of wire after Beaker over here stops. <laughs> and you want to strip the ends. This wire is going to go from the normally open on the switch you just soldered, which is the trigger switch, to the normally closed on this like brake switch, on the third switch that's mildly necessary. So now you'll run a wire from the normally closed on the trigger switch to the comm on the brake switch. Guys, before we solder on and put our pusher back in, we're going to do some shell cutting right here. There's this uh, blue semicircle at the back, and we're going to cut off the top portion of it with snips. Once you cut that out, you can go ahead and strip uh, one end. side so that because we're probably going to have to cut it so that it's the right length. Once you uh, strip the wires, you can go ahead and solder them onto the motor tabs, connection point thingies, um, using the smallest amount of solder possible so that they can fit. And you want to do it out the top, so coming this way. Once you solder your two leads to the wire, you can go ahead and, or to the motor, sorry, you can go ahead and set it down in there. Now that we've put our pusher in, we can screw it down. Now that you've screwed your pusher box in, you can go ahead and uh, measure and cut the left wire. It's going to the normally open on the brake switch. Which is the middle and most painful one it could go to. Now you'll want to measure and cut and strip your remaining leads to go to the comm on the trigger switch. So now that done all your soldering, you can put it back together.